What is going on, everybody? Happy Saturday, Bobby Five, back with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are gonna do a quick rundown of the baseball slate. We're thrilled to have baseball back. It was a lousy first couple nights for me, but uh, ready to get into it again today. We'll be bringing you shows every day. So uh, yeah, Sheets, uh, any first thoughts on this slate? How did you do last night? First uh, initial baseball reactions. Yeah, so um, felt it felt good playing the lineups. Uh, I played the 150 lineups in the FanDuel, and I, uh, I broke almost like dead even to like $6 there. And then I, um, DraftKings, I did, did not do as well I, at all. I mean, I played like 20 lineups and I cashed in one. And a couple of, a uh, couple of, couple of cool takes. Um, I, one thing we were right about, I thought I knew that Minnesota Chicago game was going to be just pretty, uh, pretty live on both sides. And, um, and that, that was true. Um, we took a shot, you know, I was, I was with you, man. I, we took a shot kind of sort of fading Boston a little bit. You know what I mean? And they, uh, they, they kind of blew up. Um, but, then, you know, that's baseball. That's just yeah. kind of the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those nights. Um, I mean, I didn't play Kyle Hendricks much. Uh, nope. Beaver a fair bit, which was good. Yep. I thing I did, I played Didi a little bit, which was good. I played J.D. Martinez. But um, certainly needed to do some other things to win some tournaments yesterday. That's yeah, that's the way it goes. Or do you want me? What, if you want me to share my screen, or what do you want to yeah, do? Yeah, go ahead and share your screen. I, it's probably worth noting, just to, by the way, that the two millionaire makers both were one, and you know, no chops. Um, we thought so, huh? They would look a little bit the, light, the way you look. You think um, the thing that's you know, Jackie Bradley being on both of them makes a lot of sense. I mentioned him when I was saying if you're going to stack the Red Sox, do something a little different like that. But it's just crazy. It shows you know, you got you got some 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 holes here. They had they had Devers at four at, at with four fantasy points, uh, Chavez with four fantasy points, and you still end up winning a tournament with a bazillion people. Um, yep. incredible stuff. Okay, so let me let me um so I'm sharing my screen here and and I guess I mean do you want to go game by game or I could just kind of just rank my pitchers and and then rank and then you could rank your pitchers and then we could you know, rank our stacks and talk about that. You want to do it that way or do you want to go game by game? Let's go game by game real quick. It's, it's, I think it should be easy if we just do it. Um, Sounds good. Okay, so the, the Milwaukee, So for me, the Milwaukee-Chicago game, I had no interest in the, in the pitchers. The only thing that I had a little, like, minor, minor interest in is I had Milwaukee as a possible team to, uh, to play um, – on the hitting side, but, but in fairness, it's probably my one, two, three, four, five, maybe my seventh or eighth favorite team. Um, but they did make my player pool and then my stack pool. So I figured I would just bring it up, but I didn't have any interest in either of the pitchers though. And it's kind of interesting. I mean, I, I'm looking at you Darvish being the, I didn't even realize he was the top um, salary guy on the slate. I, I literally have zero of him. So um, what, uh, what do you think about this game? Uh Nice warm hitting weather in Chicago. Not really any wind to deal with. Not blown out. Not blown in. Um, sort of like a, a just a just just an avoiding one for me. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I guess that you keep an eye on see if we get a total at some point. There's no total yet. If they really think the weather is gonna maybe maybe have some sort of an impact, that could actually be why there's no total. Um, doesn't look like there will be any, and I'm looking at the forecast, but. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not overly excited uh, about either of these teams' offenses. Uh, I, Darvish, if you end up using him, fine. Just not for me. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in anything here. Milwaukee has a pretty strong bullpen. At least has some good bullpen arms. Not really trying to pick on them. If you end up with a Schwarber, that's fine. If you end up with uh, any of the big boys, any one through four, one through five of uh, Chicago, and I think you're fine. It's just not going to be for me too much. Um, simple as that. No problem. We could cross the game off for you. I'm, I'm just kind of interested in playing Milwaukee coming off of getting just smoked by freaking Kyle Hendricks um, against the top uh, salary guy on the slate and Darvish. I, I, I have a weird feeling that this could be a Milwaukee nine run game, but uh, that's why I just put it on kind of my list uh, of guys. And God forbid they get a little bit of outgoing wind. Um, we'll see. Sure. sure. No, and I'm curious where the total comes in. Cause that might make me revisit some things because I have some stacks that I like, but um I wouldn't mind, you know, getting a little bit of action in this game. I don't think I'd be stacking Milwaukee at all, but I think that I might take a, a piece or two here, uh, depending on, you know, I don't know, depending on once we go through everything, we'll sort of figure it out. Okay, so um, Boston and Milwaukee, excuse me, Boston and Baltimore, I actually have some some interest um, in uh, in Perez on the Boston side as a, as a cheap pitcher at 5,500. 
Um, again, I don't know if everybody's going to be on him, whatever, but I mean, playing against Baltimore and your 5,500, I, I fear worth a shot. And, you know, hitting wise, I, um, I guess Boston is going to be live again and popular and, you know, the same, same, same dudes against, against Alex Cobb. It's going to, you know, definitely a, a team that you want to, you know, try to attack. But I also, again, as, and again, this, they didn't quite make it. But actually, on FanDuel, they made a little bit. I have, in a similar way, I wouldn't mind playing some Baltimore guys um, against Perez. You know, and that's been that was one way that I, I made good money last year. Is is when you got these chalky, I guess you can be chalky, these chalky cheap guys. Those are those are kind of easy ways to 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 get leverage is to just play kind of shitty hitters against them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so so that so that would be my 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 take on this game. Yeah, I, I I would initially, uh, you know, the obvious thing is going to be stacking the Red Sox, obviously, after the, you know, even coming through last night. I think that that's fine. Um, I like the Red Sox stack just fine. I, I Cobb we, is not the pitcher that he once was and can certainly get beaten around. The same with the Baltimore bullpen. So it's the, it's the normal suspects. It's just a matter of how chalky you want to get on this slate. And I, I tend to have a little bit of an aversion to it. And I take a different approach. A lot of people say, like, with the Coors games that you should stack or fade those things all the time. I, I don't believe in that kind of thing. So I, I think that you try and find the, the best the bats in the best spots. Probably you'd start with JD, but you know, you have a really cheap Ben attendee. He's going to be popular, but Devers price might keep people some, some off of them some, somewhat. So you could sort of argue for, you know, maybe one or two guys from this team. If, if somehow Verdugo plays today, he would be probably my favorite player on the team. Um, Jackie Bradley Jr. would be another one at the bottom of the order, always under owned. That's, that's the way I would look to do that. And then on the Baltimore side, I actually – I wouldn't stack them, but I have a little bit of interest in uh, – I mean, if you want a cheap shortstop, Jose Iglesias is 3,200. It's on DraftKings. It's probably worth noting, and he's batting third. It's a, it's a pretty strong matchup for them, but not enough to where I'm going to go nuts with it. Hanzo Roberto, Austin Hayes, and uh, Renato Nunez would be my favorites, along with uh, Severino as a catcher. But it's just, again, not all that exciting. I would prefer the Red Sox side of it. And uh, mainly I would just try and make sure if you do stack the Red Sox to try and get a little bit off the board, like everybody who won the tournament yesterday. They got off would, the board with the bottom – by stacking the bottom of the lineup. So I would, I would like to tout somebody, okay? I would like to – again, we're not going to spend all that much time on all these players, but I want to spend five, three minutes on this. So we're only going to have a 60-game season, right? 60 slates, whatever it was. Yep. And, you know, you guys that are watching us or mm-hmm. guys that aren't or whatever it is, I mean, there's a lot of places that you can go for, for information and for advice and things like that. And, and I, I would actually, and Bobby didn't know I was doing this. I would, I would like to, to tell Bobby in, in this particular way, like there, there, there are, there are a lot of people out there that, um, that will give like more complicated and better projection systems. Like Bobby, for example, is not going to give you that. Right. There, there's a lot of people out there that, that will give a better analysis of what arm angle a guy is, is going to be, is going to be pitching. And there's also, there are guys out there that might actually come up with better plays maybe even than Bobby does. But one thing that if you guys watch these, these videos, I really want you to learn from this. And this is what I've learned from him over the last year and a half, like more than he would even imagine, is that Bobby is extremely good at differentiating by lineup construction and different builds without having to go take weird plays that have no chance like, like stupid stuff that like – not stupid stuff, but things like he just said that, you know, don't necessarily just go all or nothing with, with, with some of these games like Rockies and, or whoever because that's what everybody's doing. One way to differentiate yourself with all these slots is to do it's just something a little different when you're construction. Like, yeah, go one or two from those instead of just having to take this big stand all or fade. Or, or, you know, watch when Bobby says something like, you know what, I like the Red Sox, but maybe I don't like the one, two, three, four, five. Maybe I'll like a one, four, six, seven, you know just to, to take advantage of those types of things without being popular. It, it doesn't take that much, but, and even when we go back to basketball, when we talked about, you know, b- between when people struggle so much, do I want this value guy or this value guy? And what a lot of people do is say, oh, I'll put 50% of him in one and 50% in the other. And he'll say, no problem. I'll just go both. And I'll figure out how to do it somewhere else. So, so I wanted to tout him in this way. Um, I really try to pay attention to those little things that he says, about about little particulars of line of construction. So I think that's in, that's incredible stuff. I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, I think that line of construction is like the most, you know, 
I, I, I would say that in, in baseball, well, I don't know about it, it depends on the sports, but I, I think in general, it's, just, it's like one of the most important things in, in the industry. And it's obviously a way you can, you don't need to have all the, you, you know, you, you can find the best at route without having to have the, doesn't need to be the obvious way of going about that route. I don't know. I, I, I shouldn't talk about it. I think okay. I've got, all right, let's move on to. Uh, so my tape on Minnesota, um, uh, Chicago is, um, okay. I said that we're going to have to deal with Minnesota every single slate. And this is, this is a pretty interesting um, one because Keiko is not the type of guy that's going to give up a lot of stuff usually. Um, so you have, uh, you have, but then, then he might be a little washed. Also. So, so we, we don't know. Uh, Minnesota is, I think they're always in play. I don't think I'm going to get to them today, but I will say that they're always in play. The, the White Sox, again, I don't want to get overly biased, right? And I said from the beginning that I'm going to, going to try to play these White Sox whenever I can. And this is a pretty good freaking spot, you know, with, 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 with Dobnak just coming in for, at, at the last minute. Um, you know, the White Sox could freaking tee off on this guy. And, and, and one guy that you should be uh, – I don't know if you watch, anybody watched the game last night, but um, this guy on the White Sox, Robert – he was real. I didn't get all the stats or whatever, but he was swinging it really, really hard. I mean, he like, he just drilled the ball right to the wall. He was first pitch swinging. You know what I mean? And with this guy, you know, uh, with a guy that's coming in for a spot start, he might just, without even knowing who this guy is, just throw balls over the plate. And this guy could be a guy to watch um, going forward, this, this Lewis Robert guy. So um, I definitely have, have interest in the White Sox and until they become really popular, um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep riding, uh, riding my White Sox takes for a while. I think. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some, some huge upside on this team. They're, they're certainly priced like it too. I mean, which that's true. Isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world in terms of maybe keeping the ownership low. Um, I agree actually on, on that. I think Robert actually is a, uh, is, is an up and comer that people sort of yeah, missed a couple of years ago, I would say. But, um, but, I, but yeah, I mean, it, you could, you could make an argument for all these guys, even though individually I don't love the matchups. I have to say, even if I'm not going to play the Twins, I might just every day. Like, when you're facing a lefty and you've got Nelson Cruz, you've got Josh Donaldson, yeah. you've got Miguel Sano, you've got even a guy like Byron Buxton, who's just absolutely crushed lefties uh, this far in his career compared to righties. I just think it's interesting. And then you've got the weird, you know, you could play the lefties in there if you wanted to get that stack, but – Mostly I'll probably be taking because Keiko's pretty good at limiting damage, although he is getting older. Um, maybe one or two of those guys per lineup. But really, I mean per lineup. I mean, like, maybe not stacking the Twins at all, but maybe making sure I have at least one or two of these power righty bats in my lineup. And maybe maybe make one or two three-man stacks with a, with a, a Kepler or a, a Rosario, who no one's going to play in a lefty-lefty spot. And well, then, it's funny. It's funny. You want to know who you you didn't mention that that I I again I, I kind of like this sometimes is to this guy's always overpriced, but he can uh -huh. he can he can drill it is to like overpay for Garver a catcher. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's would definitely be different because everybody wants to punt catcher, and he can you know like anybody else in Minnesota, especially when he's five space in the left, I mean, he can just he can drill people so. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, so as I said, Minnesota is just live every single slate. Um, they, they, they really are. I, I'm honestly not interested in, in the twin in the White Sox as a stack at all. I actually okay. feel like the kind of game doesn't set up well for stacks. But I do think their lineup is really interesting. And I, and why, do you, why, why do you say that? I'm just kidding. I, I don't like games where you have a guy who's going to come in and pitch three innings starting. That's, that's all. Oh, uh, okay, right. okay. It's, okay. It, and everybody thinks of it like inherently the opposite. Although people who have been in the industry have learned enough to realize that it's really bad for offense. But, but, but I mean – but to get a piece or two, yeah. I mean, is it hard, though, to, to rank? It? For me, it is. I think that I'm going to stand by my Mancata is going to be, you know, as good a player as anybody in baseball this year. And by the end of the year, we're all going to agree with that. That was what I said before the year started. He'd probably be the one I would side with. It feels kind of crazy paying that price for Grandall, even though. Yeah. I mean, but we were talking about Mitch Garver at 5.3. We could play Grandall at 5. That makes some sense, you know. You know what's interesting, by the way, about um, – it's so funny. Like, Encarnacion had the same issue when he was uh, from his team last year. It's – it's it's you want to play both Abreu and, um, you know, when you – sometimes have to choose between Abreu and, uh, and Encarnacion because they're both only first base eligible, right? So, right. so you, you got to look to FanDuel if you want to do – if you want to do stuff like that. So – I mean, usually it's, I don't know, in Carson last year was the same thing. I forget who he was battling with. Um, 
for 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 ownership in, in the same slot. I forget, what team was he on last year in Carnacion? Thank you. <laughs> right. Okay. So there you go. So he was. Um, I forget it was him and Delamay. I forget who it was. Who yeah, was. yeah. It was. It was him and uh, yeah, I can't remember what, but I remember. Yeah. It was, sometimes it was Voight. Um, yeah. Yeah. With the DH situation. Yeah. yeah. It's annoying. But I mean, look. They all. Everybody won through seven, including Robert. I, I think is fine as a one-off. I'm just not going to be stacking this game myself. Uh, so okay. Stacking my tech side. <laughs> all right. So moving on, Pittsburgh. Uh, St. Louis. I am uh, okay. So this is my. T- I'm not interested in either either of the pitchers. Um, I um, I have some really just kind of dirty interest in both of these bats. I, I don't I don't know why. Uh, maybe this is coming up like really really cheap. But um, uh, I played these. I played the Cardinals bats last night. They were kind of cheap. They, a couple of guys did okay. And boy, playing Pittsburgh is really asking for it. They have like nobody. But um. They are cheap, and Wainwright. Wainwright's always a guy that I just, just, just. Can't, I've just been waiting for him to just like retire. You know what I mean? Like he used to be right. so good, and um, maybe it's maybe it's reaching. But for whatever reason, I just put, put both those teams down as as value value hitters to go after. So that that that's where I'm at. I'm not playing either pitcher, and that's uh, my initial take. So I'm I'm a little uh, I'm a little confused on this one myself because. I've heard mixed things about Wainwright. I've heard, I've actually heard from different people that he looks awesome. He's better. He's better than he's been throwing the ball in forever. And I also heard that he's not going to pitch very long. Oh. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know what's a, what's a exactly rate as a stack in general. Pittsburgh is not the kind of team I like to stack. I do like the pricing. Obviously, I like to use them as pieces. Uh, preferred play on Pittsburgh for me would be Brian Reynolds. Um, I'm writing this down. Actually. Yeah, I'm actually going to make sure I, I, I get some Reynolds in there because. And, and look, if you, if you end up just being a spot with Moran, he does have some pop. He's 3.1K at, at first base. It's not exciting. Um, I'd probably prefer him a little bit over Osuna. Um, what about Bell? Kevin Newman, okay. Josh Bell, it's, it's, it's just a matter of where do you want to use your, your money. And we okay. get a lot of games, and there's a lot of good first basemen out there, and I just yeah. don't see myself picking Josh Bell over them. That makes um, sense. You know what's interesting about Josh Bell? He's, he's got power, but not a ton. He's more of just a really good hitter. And okay. I don't want really good hitters in my DFS lineups. I want guys who are going to hit me home runs. Um, but, I, but, I mean, again, and, and also he's the only one who's expensive. So it's, it, it makes it a little bit, you know, easier to sort of not be as interested. But I really like the Cardinals today. Um, I, I, I don't think – I don't actually like usually picking on Trevor Williams. I don't think he's – he limits enough. But this matchup is tough. And it's going to be hot in St. Louis. I completely believe in the offense. I like, like – I don't know if it's like you or what – but I, I'm I'm a big believer that St. Louis's offense is is like drastically underperformed last year, and I think that you're going to see a much better season out of all these guys: uh, Goldschmidt, um, Carpenter, Colton Wong, uh, Tommy Edmond, who was actually very good last year, uh, Paul DeYoung. There's just one through eight in this lineup, and I even go down to Harrison Bader at number nine. But Tyler O'Neill, I actually mentioned him yesterday on a different show um, on the, the, the QLTV thing. He hit a home run, right? Uh, yeah, Tyler O'Neill batting eighth is a one-off. It hits the home run. Um, but I, So, I mean, that was one of the very few things I got right. But I, I do like the St. Louis team a little bit, probably looking more as a three- or four-man stack. Um, but mostly it's going to be uh, the normal suspects, Wong, Goldschmidt, uh, Edmund, basically one through six. The, the one thing I want to point out about stacking really quick, too, is the people yeah. from the big tournaments last night, the big buy-in tournaments, not the giant field tournaments, mm-hmm. um, they were not stacking as much. There was, like – there was so one interesting. Like, won the 555, who I don't think had two players on the same team. What? Yeah. Um, was it somebody – I mean, a good player? Or? Yeah, yeah. And you can, you can make – but, I mean, look, and his other lineups were stacks. But this lineup, he didn't stack, you know? That's amazing. Yeah. So anyway, just things things happen sometimes like that, you know. It's it's a okay. and even on Fanduel, I noticed it too. There was a one of the guys who won the uh, one of the big ones on Fanduel was two was a two 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 stack. It wasn't like there was nothing to it. So just interesting to just to keep that stuff in mind that even though people treat like you have to stack, you don't have to fully stack. You don't have to stack at all. But mini stacks and things like that are the way I like to to differentiate my build. Anyway, we can move on. Okay, so the next game comes up with one of the. Um... One of the pitchers who was uh, who's really really cheap. Who um, I, again, we can talk about popularity in a minute, but he's probably going to be one of the top rated plays throughout the industry, and probably going to get a whole lot of ownership. Along with another guy that's in my lineup right now, Ryan Yarborough um, from Tampa. 
Um, I, I guess <laughs> I'm not in the position to argue too much. Um, he's just not usually the type of guy that I, I want to rely on. Um, but I don't know, maybe, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, we'll get to, we'll get to him later, but I, if, if in fact Bundy is starting, I, I have no problem pivoting to him at, with, with upside. Uh, um, if what's his name is going to be overly popular, but Ryan Yarbrough certainly looks like a strong play. And I, I really had no other interest in anybody else from this game. Now, again, I, I didn't Tampa didn't quite make my, um, my, my hitters list, but I can certainly get talked into it, but they're just not on it right now. So that was, that was my first take is, is, I mean, I have to say, I've been I'm a little bit of a projection donkey when it comes to this, to pitching. And when I just looked throughout the industry, it just looked like Yarba just rates to be just like a really, really strong play. So I figured I would just relay that information. He's just not a guy that I just, you know, play all that often, but I'm going to have to today probably. Yeah. So you can mark the Blue Jays as one of my, they're not going to do it this year teams, but they're the kind of team that in the short season, I actually had some interest in coming in because there is just an immense amount of young talent on this team. Sure. And, and I think that you, we want to start keeping an eye out for these guys that, yeah, you know, this is Tampa Bay and good relief team. Like, you know, doesn't, doesn't stretch their starters out too long. So generally keeps the score pretty low, not a spot where you want to stack them, but I think we want to keep an eye on them going forward. Just want to make sure that, that we really covered that. We didn't talk about them yesterday because they weren't on right. the right. But you're going to want to have guys like, especially Bo Bichette, Gavin Biggio, uh, Vlad Guerrero in your lineups. You're going to be mixing those guys in pretty much daily. And then occasionally you'll get the, the Tiasca Hernandez and you'll mix in the Rowdy Tellers. Well, this is going to be a team that you're going to have some really cheap guys and some really expensive guys. The young guys really expensive. And it's going to be very easy to stack as the season progresses. Um, and I think their, their offense is going to be very boom or bust. So I actually really like this offense for future stacking, but mostly looking to take pieces from this Bichette, uh, Guerrero, Biggio thing, just in general. Today specifically, I think I would just play Guerrero and Bichette. Um, but that's just because I, I don't love the matchup and I don't love the, the, the stadium for them. Honestly, if they were in their old Toronto stadium, I'd like it a lot better. Well, so, so hang on. So, so with Toronto with all this pop and all this potential, and you just mentioned that Tampa likes to, doesn't like to stretch their pitches out or whatever. So do we, do we really have to play Yarbrough as, as huge chalk? I actually like Yarbrough a lot. Um, no, but why? You know what I mean? Like, you just, based on what you just said. You know, I mean, just, all the things I say about the Blue Jays are, like, I, I like them for DFS. When I like playing people for DFS, I usually like them on both ways. It means they strike out a lot and they have a lot of power. Okay. These guys have both upsides. Yarbrough is actually phenomenally consistent. Like, I don't even okay. see him as a – and I don't even know if he's going to actually start the game. Is that even official? Like, I know he's listed here as a starter, but they, they, they usually bring him in after one inning. So that's the only time where he's usually – if that ends up happening, he might end up being lower on people's – I don't well, if that's also the case, then you then again just just remind me. You don't want want to play him on Fanduel when you when you get quality start points. That you you don't. To. I don't think you get him anymore. You don't get him anymore. Oh, is that true? Okay. Yeah. Um. But but I so I like Yarbrough. I, I, I but it's not love. I mean, and where okay. I have Yarbrough, I'm gonna have little pieces. But I think Vlad Guerrero is one of the best plays on the slate. Just oh, okay. Be up against the lefty at under 4K. We didn't yeah. see all this guy's talent yet, and it's just gonna explode this year. So he's one of my favorite value plays on the slate. You like um, any hitters on Tampa? No. Um, Brandon Low, Brandon Lau, Low, however you want to pronounce it, uh, would be the, the only guy I would consider. But uh, they're not going to let you play this uh, this uh, Yoshi, Yoshitimo guy. Um, by the way, okay. a weird thing last night by DraftKings. What uh, happened? I had Otani in like 20% of my lineups. Oh, yeah. What's that all about? I message right before the game, like 10 minutes before the game, Otani will not be accruing any points. I, I didn't understand what the hell that was about. Well, weird, right? That's going to be interesting today. I mean, like if he, I, for, my first run had him plus starting, but I don't think he is. I think he's starting tomorrow. I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's even going to be in the lineup today. But, um, but maybe he will. I don't know actually. Um, I no, but I had him starting pitching today. <laughs> oh, oh, that's funny. Um, yeah. but anyway, yeah, that was that was really weird. But fortunately, you know, switch to Loriano. After I say everything that happened last night, I'm surprised I ended up losing so much money. Right. Um, it felt like it was better than that. All right, you want to move on to the next one? Yeah, so Colorado, Texas. I didn't have any interest in the hitters in these teams. I did have some interest in um, both of the pitchers. In, in, uh, and it's so weird, right? Because cause at Texas, you just – It's a different Texas. I know that. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's so weird to, like, think it's a new season that, that we're playing both pitchers in, 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 a, in a July game in Texas. But um, it is, it's a new stadium. It's a new deal. And um, – 
And I, th- I have interest in both these guys. I have interest in Minor. I have interest in John Gray. And, uh, and these were ne- neither, neither of these teams made it for me with the hitters. I mean, what do, what do you think? Yeah, sort of in the same, same page a little bit. Um, I think Arenado is a strong play as a one-off hitter. Um, Trevor's story is fine, but it's a little expensive. Um, but there's a lot of that third baseman. So I think that mostly I'm just going to leave this as Joey Gallo and uh, the pitchers. <laughs> that's mostly – that's probably all I'll play from this. I don't mind if you end up with Odor. Um, less interested in Chu because he, he doesn't run anymore and yeah. he walks so much. But you, you save him for stacks usually. I, I would go with Gallo or Odor. Uh, not not a lot of interest in anybody else, and then Arenado or or Story on the other side, but really not a lot of interest. We can kind of move on. But I do like the pitchers. I think both pitchers are in. Both pitchers have plenty of upside uh, for their price. They're both uh, actually effective enough pitchers where I actually feel kind of good about. Like not safe. It always feels weird to say that, but like I guess I do feel kind of safe with these guys. So they're they're probably two of my favorite pitchers on the board. Okay, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to walk me through this Miami Philadelphia thing, okay? Because all right, so here's my initial take. My initial take is I, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I mean, I had the Phillies last night like, all over the place against, against like Alcantara. They couldn't do anything. And now that Caleb Smith is pitching, I, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be playing Phillies again. Um, and <laughs> uh, they're, they're one of my top uh, teams to, to, to attack for some reason. And it, it's, just, um, it's, it's a much better pitcher. Um, I mean, when I just look at this, by the way, I mean, you, Caleb Smith is 6,900. I mean, I, 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 re- I wasn't going to play him. And then I'm looking at him at 6,900. I'm like, that's, he used to be really good. I don't know. I mean, so, so you have to talk me through this. Uh, I didn't want to, I don't want any of the Miami hitters and Zach Wheeler is certainly on my list of pitchers to look at. It's not my favorite, but I, I was honestly wanted to leech off you to get some information on, on both Caleb Smith at 6,900, the pitcher and, and going back to the Phillies. I have no idea. Yeah. The strikeouts just dropped off the roof. Uh, like that what happened for uh, for Smith last year. Um, I, I, it's weird, man, because I don't think he's as bad. Necess- well, it's hard though. I mean, he pitched. He, he's he played as badly as the price at the end of the season, but I don't think that's necessarily he's necessarily that bad. But I do like Philly here. I mean, it's okay, a, I, right. a hey, it's right. it's you know, it's a lefty. It's uh, right. okay. it's 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 a you know, great hitting environment and a team that should should theoretically just crush lefties. Um, maybe you can go for more of a mini stack, but the bullpen is weak enough for the Marlins. I think you can probably just go ahead and and go for it here. Um, I think your priority plays are Reese Hoskins. Never mind Bryce against the lefty, by the way. So that's the one you can uh, probably get a little lower ownership than you should. Um, okay. Real, Real Muto, uh, Segura, Segura and Kingery, especially Segura at 3.6 at shortstop is an excellent price. Uh, Didi is also a guy you can play against lefties. The McCutcheon has always been a good lefty hitter, uh, lefty crusher. This team theoretically should crush left-handed pitching. Okay. Um, not say they will, but they should. Uh, I, I like them. Um, definitely one of the one of the pr- preferred stacks I'm taking a shot at. But yeah, I could easily see a, a, a route where you get into another situation. And I mean, the Phillies like are, they're they're this incredibly streaky team. They were like this last year. They have the days where they put up 13 runs in the first three innings, and then they just go two games without scoring a run. Like it's just a, they're they're weird. They're inconsistent. But I like I, I like taking shots on them, and I particularly like uh, you know the, the righty Segura, Kingery, McCutcheon, Hoskins. You like Zach Wheeler? No. Oh, beautiful. I, I, I just think I'm just going to save myself some – he's expensive. He's a good pitcher. He's probably not as good a pitcher as the price, but on this slate maybe. I, I just am going to save myself. Maybe I'll throw him in one lineup, but mostly, mostly I just think I'm going to avoid him. Okay. So, I actually just like – I like Corey Dickerson, by the way, a little bit. As a one-off? As a one-off for, for Miami. Okay, so Dodgers, San Francisco. All right, let's let's have another blowout, I guess. Um, I like Alex Wood against San Francisco, and I like all all uniform players for the Dodgers in hitting. I mean, uh, next. I mean, what, what do you? I mean, honestly, what do what do you think? I don't know how we don't play the Dodgers here. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's right. Also, on top of it, we finally get some nice warm weather to play them in. You know, versus the seventy degree games, we're going to get the eighty degree game today. It's a uh, it's a lot different, you know. You get a lot a lot a lot more pop on these bats. Uh, I'm personally, yeah, I'm I'm all over the Dodgers as the number one stack. Okay. Uh, 
I don't even think it's – when they play during the day, you're going to hear me say that probably every day this year. Um, and it's everybody. It's – it's it's I, I could just name names. I guess if you're going to just prioritize um, Bellinger, Betts, Muncie. And they just all prioritize all, the top nine. And, just, and, 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 but I would just say – I'll keep going back to this. Corey Seager is going to be woefully under-owned consistently. Okay. Play Corey Seager. He's going to have a monster season. He's only 4K. In this 4K, he doesn't get played. He was 5% owned yesterday. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and play Corey Seager. So that's – I love this whole team. I, he will get played today, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, but you just go all the way down. And I, I don't have any argument with any player on this lineup. I am fine with Alex Wood. I'm not excited by it. I think you're going to see the Dodgers vary their pitchers starting uh, innings. Like, you know, if they're cruising as much as, as you had right. from last night, they're going to let him go. If not, you're probably not going to. Um, I do think that it's probably worth just noting a couple of the bats from uh, from the San Francisco side. Like, I, I think you could play um, Wilmer Flores. I think he's a strong play against uh, Wood. He's always hit lefties, obviously, really well. Um, Austin Slater and Maurice Dubon, more price-related. That's, But I think that they're both interesting a little bit. But I would say that Austin Slater would be – Austin Slater is probably going to be the only other one along with uh, – Flores and then Pence if he was cheaper or Darren Ruff if he, Darren Ruff starts today at 2.3 yeah I know I had him in my uh yeah in my list of uh of whatchamacallits of uh of, of, of uh of value guys yeah yeah I mean that's an interesting one so so that, I like this game I actually you know I, I, we don't have a total yet on this Dodger game but if you're going to ask me right now assuming that the weather does stay in the 80s I would just tell you this. This. this uh, I think it's going to be more scoring in this game than, than than we've seen from both sides. Um, you know something you mentioned, by the way, um, and I always look for different little correlations in baseball. You you had mentioned that um, uh, that if if the team is cruising, it's more likely to like let them go. And I think that isn't that all the more reason to just play Wood alongside with the Dodgers. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely, absolutely, in general. And the Giants lineup isn't really scary, but I, I do have a feeling they're going to put up some runs today. Um, and I sort of like some of the matchups for them, but, but Wood's fine. Wood is absolutely one of the – put him in the same category as Gray. Uh, maybe a little bit of Gray. Okay, so um, Angels, Oakland. Uh, it's not listed as pitching now, but um, presuming that Bundy is pitching, and again, obviously you have to look for this. I really, I really do like him. Uh, I played him just – probably more than a human being should over the last like couple of years. Um, but every once in a while, he'll throw up a great game um, at low ownership. And sometimes, um, you know, he's just that guy that he's going to get some strikeouts. Sometimes he's going to get blown up some other times. And, and, you know, and from a price perspective, he's, he's right around that same price as obviously what's going to be a much better option in um in, in Yarborough, but, but, but hell, it just significantly lower ownership. He's not even listed as on the board right now. You know what I mean? So just you know, keep an eye on that. He's certainly on my, my kind of short list of kind of off the board pitchers to kind of go after. Um, and I also like the angels as, as um, uh, uh, hitting here a little bit. Uh, I like, uh, well, obviously if Rendon plays, it's, it's uh, makes it even more juicy. But, um, you know, this, the, the normal guys, I mean, Trout, Rendon, Goodwin, um, even Lestelle, if he gets in there, I think that's probably a decent shot. So I uh, like the Angels. Obviously, if Rendon's in, I got to like him a little bit more. Um, and uh, I do like Bundy on the Angels. Yeah, okay. So let's see. Uh, so, Okay. The Angels part of it is really easy for me. I, I, I wouldn't even consider looking at anybody except for Trout or Upton, and I think they're both strong plays. Trout, even if Rendon plays, you wouldn't play him? Oh, Upton's only 3,500, yeah. Rendon plays. Rendon said he wasn't going to play this year. Rendon? I don't know. I, I thought that um, – I, 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 I don't know. I, I thought that – I don't know. I thought well, that I guess, I guess, I guess it changed I guess it, I guess it changed his mind like a little Oladipo. Yeah. I, I, I just sort of crossed him off my list because, uh, I mean, I don't have him projected in any lineups, but okay. Uh, but maybe he does come back and play. Who knows? And maybe Trout coming back, may, maybe Trout deciding to play changed his mind. Who knows? Well, we'll take um, a look at it. You know, that's obviously, if he plays, things are – If you know, he plays, he's a, he's a strong play for sure. Right. But I don't know that in general that you want to start paying like $9 million for against a good pitcher just because they're lefty-righty, you know? And that's sure just what this is. 
but Justin Upton at 3.5, <laughs> it's a little <laughs> bit, a little bit silly. Okay. Um, I do want to point out this also, this game, you know, again, has the coolest weather of any game on the board. All right. Uh, just, you got to look out for this stuff in the summer times. So we know what Chris Day, we know what Dylan Bundy struggles with, right? Um, by the way, the odd part is a lot of the guys we liked, Sheets, who weren't even that high owned like Chris Davis yesterday, he was on the millionaire, both millionaire lineups, even though he only had six fantasy points. Did, Ch <laughs> did Chapman hit a walk off grand slam or something? And I think Olsen did hit a big one. Olsen? <laughs> yeah. I had Olsen, you know, but not yeah. enough, obviously. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we got a, we, you know, like, I don't know. So we want to try and pick out the home run hitters. We want Matt Chapman. We want Olsen. We want Davis. Yep. And maybe you want a shot of uh, some Loriano. You don't want anybody else, in my opinion. Okay. I, I don't think we want to fully stack Oakland against – I get it. But I want to get exposure to the power bats, try and pick on Bundy from that angle, and not try to do the obvious, oh, Dylan Bundy's pitching, let's go stack against him. And then let's also play Dylan Bundy. No, we'll play Dylan Bundy, and then we'll take little pieces against him. That's what I want to do today. Uh, okay. Right. So, Seattle, Houston. Um, all right. So, this is going to be the – I presume the top-rated play on the slate. By the way, I mean, we're not going to really go over FanDuel, but just, just remember there's a really, really um, – there are two very, very top pitchers play, pitching on the FanDuel slate, but not on DraftKings. That's like Clevenger and um, yep. and Luis Castillo. You know That's what I mean? So, just point. keep yeah. just keep those two in mind. You know what I mean? I do happen to like – I like both of them, honestly. Um, yeah, Clevenger is my favorite pitcher of the day. So it's Okay. But, but 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 McCullers is going to rate to be the top pitcher on the slate. Um, he's yep. good enough he's against Seattle, and you know between him and I guess Yarborough, those are going to be the two highest rated slash most popular slash whatever plays on the slate. And and I I do like uh, you know going against Seattle. It's always kind of juicy to to uh, and that's why that's one of the reasons why he's going to be the highest rated one of the highest rated pitchers on the slate. So. So, so I do like him a lot. Um, yeah, with that said, um, I also don't have a problem taking a couple of Seattle shots also um, with Kyle Seeger, with Vogelbach, with just whatever, whatever lefties I can kind of dream up in here, even, um, yeah. you know what I mean? So I have no problem playing, and especially considering how I own the Houston he's going to be. I have no problem with a couple of Seattles. Uh, on the Houston side, I mean, it could be another – could be another blowout, you know. He's uh, all these guys are in play. Um, I don't know. By the way, you know, we can talk about it later. I don't know. If, did they get hit at all yesterday or no? Who Houston? Yeah. Yeah, they got uh, they scored runs. The problem was no, no, no. Did they get hit by a pitch? No. Oh but yeah. If, I mean, if there was one guy who wasn't going to hit the note, wasn't going to be Perez specifically. Or Marco Perez. Gonzalez. Marco Gonzalez. Gonzalez. He's just a just nice, like likable, like guy. It's hard for me to picture him hitting right. one. But so so he's so, so, I see it happening. <laughs> Right. So Houston, they're obviously live. I mean, they're, you know, you can afford them. Everybody's in play, right? I mean. Yeah, I think that you want to prioritize a little bit with Houston. Go ahead. Um, so here's, I made the really big point yesterday of saying, don't worry about Brantley versus lefties and all that stuff. And I know he hit the home run later and all that stuff in the game last night. But I was really frustrated by this. Just as a very quick little thing. I was very frustrated by a couple of things. One, I ended up spreading out some ownership with a, a few of these uh, uh, Mariners and just played a bunch of them as one-offs, but mostly it was Vogelbach. And, yeah. the one. and then I'd see the score change, but not really see where it was in the lineup and then see that it, it would say his name, but sometimes it'll say their name on MLB after they hit the home run. And oh. I'm thinking, so I'm, I twice thought Vogelbach hit a home run for me at 0.43% ownership and no, oh. no price. And uh, it was Kyle Lewis and Kyle Seeger before that, who I also had a little bit of. And then the other frustrating part was I had Brantley in two out of my two of my five fifty fives, both Houston stacks. <sighs> Took him out of both. Oh, as my last my last adjustments, and they just, oh. just rerouted the Houston stack a different way. So so it's just you know sometimes it can be a little bit of a guessing game trying to get it right. But if you're going to try and prior prioritize, the reason people leave Brantley off more than in general is because the lack of perceived power. Now he's a guy who can get you there multiple ways because he's such a good hitter, such a good doubles hitter, always up with runners on base, all that stuff. Um, but he also does have enough power, I, I think, to, to, to be in play. I think you want to prioritize Bregman, Springer, uh, Correa. Correa would probably be my favorite play today, uh, pricing considered and all things considered. Um, he tends to have the best reverse splits of any of these guys. While Springer definitely crushes righties, so does Altuve, all, I mean, and, and Bregman. They just are a little bit more drastically better against lefties. So I tend to try and play Correa against the righties. That makes sense, right? Right, absolutely. 
Yeah, so, so, so I would actually lean if I was going to do a Houston thing today, especially in a large field tournament. You might see me go even like with six through nine or something like that, or seven through one, That's or seven, seven, nine, one, three, something like that. Um, depending on how the lineup shakes out. But that's sort of how I'd like to stack Houston today. And, and I, I would put just emphasis on the guys who just have more power. I know it sounds obvious, but we've got a pretty – this slate today is playing like a massive slate. So I think that you want to try and really uh, hone in on the, the Bregman, the Springers. The, the only other thing is that with the hit-by-pitch possibilities and the fact these guys already walk a lot, um, just keep that in mind when you're playing one or two offs. I tend to like Houston more as a stack this year than I do as individuals. That makes sense. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Uh, last game, um, uh, Mets. Uh, I wouldn't say home opener. Home opener on the on DraftKings. Put it that way. Um, but uh, I, I actually, uh, I, I actually like the Braves here uh, to target as far as hitters go. Freed had some good, some good, um, some good starts last year. Even Mats had some decent starts last year, also. But. Um, I didn't get to either of these pitchers, and I don't have interest. I don't know. I just didn't get to the Mets. I mean, you could certainly always play Alonzo and Conforto and whatever, but um, I'm uh, I don't know if I want to play Conforto against a lefty. But we'll have. Uh, but I definitely have interest in all the uh, in in the in the better Braves. I mean, between uh, well, you name them. <laughs> uh, Freeman. Uh, I don't even uh, know where to start know. with them because they all have like my favorite like. They're a perfect little team that you want to take a shot with against lefties. It's just that Mats is not that bad of a pitcher is my only issue. <laughs> like, I look at their lineup and I'm going, oh, I want to stack these guys. And then I'm going, well, Stephen Mats is not like a bad, bad pitcher. This game is going to be 90 degrees in New York. Yeah. Uh, if, if anything, I, I do think that the over on the game itself, but you have two pretty good pitchers. Just good yeah, not bad. I mean, if, if, on the average Mets game, so for example – this game, I think I saw it earlier, it's going to play about 35% better for power than the average Mets game for the season. And I think you're going That's to see interesting. it along. Because you were used to playing Mets games, you, you know how it is, in the, at the beginning of summer a lot of the time, you can have those kind of gloomy days, and, 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 and Shea's played a lot of games in the cold, then you also have the games at the end of the year where it does get cold. Yeah. So they end up playing about half their games in, in fairly bad t- hitting weather. So anyway, <laughs> I'm in on this one. I, I'm in on uh, a few of the Braves. Uh, real quick, I'm just going to say Acuna, Albies, uh, Austin Riley, Duvall, uh, Duvall would be my would be my focus. I don't mind Danby Swanson. I'm not going to play them all together, but I don't mind any of those guys. And then I think we're going to just keep playing Cespedes until. Uh, I mean, when Cespedes is fully healthy, he's a 5K player. Let's just put it that way. He's an MVP type of candidate, and he's 3.6 right now. So let's play Cespedes, especially against lefties right now. All right. So if you had to kind of summarize, you know, who would be your favorites, and you know, whatever, just real quick. Dodgers, Astros. Um, not going to be completely off the board, obviously, with those two, with a little bit of uh, a little bit of the Phillies. But I'm okay with not being a little bit off the board because I can find individual plays. Um, there's, you know, a bunch of really, really good splits today, so, and we've talked about a lot of them. But uh, you know, even if not playing all the Phillies or whatever, I do think I'm going to try and take uh, McCutcheon or Hoskins or at least get like somebody from that game in, in most of my lineups. Um, but it's Dodgers, it's Dodgers and Astros for me as the top two. And what about what about pitchers? Pitchers, it's it's McCullers by so far ahead of everyone else, and then some sort of a mix of Gray Wood, um, <laughs> trying to find some Yar- Yarborough. Yarborough, yeah. I mean, it's just going to be a mix of these guys. that don't really have a strong conviction, and I, you probably need to dig, dig a little further. Yeah, I'm 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 in with all that. St- I'm in with all that again. I'm uh, I'm a little more into I'm not a little more into, but I'm going to play some Bundy, and um, I'm probably going to be heavy. I'm probably I don't know, probably heavier on the Phillies, maybe, but we're pretty much on a similar thing. I, I, and the two guys, again, watch. I mean, if you're going to play Perez, I, I think if you play enough lineups, I think you should do some Baltimore hitters in, in other lineups also. Um, yeah. If you're going to play Perez, and, and I think likewise. Again, I, I am going to take a couple of shots. I, I, I agree with you. I think McCullers is clearly the best the best play. Yet, with that said, I'll I'll, th- I'll throw a couple of Seattle's and some some other some other lineups. Yeah, good luck on that one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, Chief, this is good, man. Hey, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, good luck today. We're going to get this video out to you right away. We will talk to you tomorrow.